also just thinking, just thinking about what um, your relationships look like, your friendships look like, and how we could all get better in our social health. And so I'd like to pray again. Um, so just bow your heads with me as I pray. Almighty Lord, we thank you for your many blessings unto us. We thank you for the love and the care that you bestow upon us. We thank you for taking care of us and bringing us safely to another week. And as, as we come together and we discuss social health and the sisterhood in the midst of social health, we pray that you will be with us. Um, help us see ourselves in this message and just draw us all closer to get together and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so I just have a few slides that I want to share. And I'm going to do that right now. And I'm just gonna ask um, to hold your questions and your comments at the end. And that way we could all just hear the full presentation and then we could just break bread together. So with that said, let me share my screen. And we are on our way. I think I actually need to cast it first and then it will show that way. So let me do this. I will just ask if you could see my screen, please let me know and then I will present. All right. So can everyone see Sisterhood and Social? <laughs> awesome. All right. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay. So Sisterhood and Social Health. What is it all about? And why is it important? So let's do this. So I don't know, oops, I don't know if you know this, but there is, um, there is a wellness wheel that we um, health and wellness coaches subscribe to. And this wellness wheel, there are actually different dimensions to it. Um, there are some six dimension wheels, some seven dimension wheels, and also some eight dimension wheels. Uh, I've been looking at the different dimensions and I actually do like the eight dimension one um, because it seems to incorporate more aspects in our lives that sometimes you might not even realize that plays a part in your overall health. So in the eight dimension wheel, as you can see, um, we have um, different aspects, but tonight we just wanna look at one aspect of it all. We want to look at the social health aspect. Now, the reason or the, uh, the, yeah, the reason behind the wellness wheel is that there is more to wellness, there's more to health than just our physical. We have the occupational aspect of our lives, which is our work, our career, social, which is what we're going to look at tonight, environmental, that um, entails your environment, where you live, the physical environment. And also we have the emotional and the mental, so they are actually separate when looking at your wellness wheel, your financial aspect of your life, and also your spiritual. So tonight, as I mentioned, we're looking at social. So social health. Social health is the health dimension that involves our interaction with others. That's all it is. It's very self-explanatory when you think about it, but it's such, it plays such a profound part of our lives that many of us don't realize that if we do not have good and strong and healthy social relationships, that it affects everything else in our lives, our physical, um, our occupational, our financial, and the list goes on. So as you know, the Lord desires that we prosper and to be in health, good health. So as I've mentioned, social health is just one of the eight aspects in the wellness wheel. And you may be one of these people that um, believe one aspect of our health is more important than another. Many people focus on their physical health lots, some their mental health, but every aspect of our health is important because they all build together. And a wheel that is broken on one side is broken throughout. So tonight, as we look at social health, I wanted us to look at the different communities we find ourselves in as it comes and relates to our health. So 
The first one is our family. From young, we are born into families, into towns and villages, in cities and countries that we had no say in, right? These were already chosen for us. The Lord decided where he wanted us to be born, to whom we should be born to, um, and how big, how small our families would be, and everything along that aspect. Because of that, because of your family dynamics, you already know that many of your belief systems and many of the different things that shape you and your relationships with each other started in your family. Now, in your family, you may have been um, exposed to different relational bonds. That um, is like sibling bonds. Your relationship with your sibling is going to be different to your relationship with your parents or a relationship with an uncle or a relationship with a cousin. But nevertheless, even in those relationships, we are being groomed in our social relationships. Even with how you interact with your sibling, you could actually learn more about yourself and more about your sibling and know how to relate to others outside of that family. It may have been easy or even awkward at times for you to make friendships outside of the home because of how your family dynamic is. And as you know, if we have any kind of dysfunction, any kind of unhealthy relationship with members in our family, that will affect our relationships outside of the family. Also in the home, I wanted to mention, you may have a, a dual relationship with someone. Your sister may also have been your first best friend. Your cousin could also have been a friend of yours, right? In my early years, I had a, um, a cousin who I was close to, but we actually had attended uh, a youth group together and became a part of this organization. And as we um, continued working together and growing in this organization, we started to get closer and closer together, not just as friends, but not sorry, not just as, as siblings, but sorry, I said siblings, but cousins, but also as friends. So I started to see her more as, um, as a friend, even if we were blood relatives. So there might be people in your family that you actually look at them and sometimes might even forget that you guys are related because the friendship between the two of you are so strong. It is okay for you to have a close female friend who also is a relative. And I just gave you my example, but we also wanna look at other examples um, of communities that help teachers and communities that help um, point us to different ways of how we could grow our social health. So after the family, after that has been established, after you have started to learn what it is to relate to your siblings, to your parents, your cousins and others, then is the neighborhood that you grew in. Uh, outside of your home, you have neighbors. Now, again, according to your culture, our neighborhoods and the relationships we have with others um, that we call neighbors will look different. I grew up in the Caribbean and in my home area, everybody was very close to one another. And I mean, very close. We never really locked our doors. It was wide open for others. Um, so if somebody needed to get in after school, they could just go into somebody else's home. And when we lacked something, whether it's a food item or something to mix and, and, and whip up some food, we could just go by a neighbor's house and ask for a cup of sugar or some milk or some butter. Uh, and then uh, it was just neighborly. We actually were very close. And so because the grown-ups were close, the children were also close. And so we got to exercise those relational um, tips and, and those um, laws and those different things that we learned in families with the neighbor, with the neighbors around us. Now, in my community, the majority of the homes were women-led. A lot of them just um, single-parent households. Uh, including my own, and we were free to run around and have some fun, and as long as we spend time in the neighborhood, uh, there were at least some adult eyes keeping an eye on us and making sure that we were um, in a safe environment. Now, although my preteen years were spent with my aunt, I used to gravitate more to boy relationships because uh, I was raised by my aunt, and she had um, 
my cousin who was three years older than me and my other cousin who was five years older than me. Now, although my older cousin was the female, I gravitated to my younger cousin who was really the older one um, because he was closer in age to me. And because he was a guy, he used to hang out with the other boys in the neighborhood. And so I would want to be his shadow and want to follow him around. And so I really didn't care for dolls and, and um, different things that girls were into because all my friends became boys because my cousin was a boy and he played with bikes and action figures and toys and trucks. And so when it was time to buy gifts for me, that's what I wanted. And so I learned to relate. I learned to be social and to be comfortable around the company of my male counterparts because that's who I used to gravitate to and that's who I used to be around. So it was very interesting that some years later, maybe two or three, I think I was about eight years old or so, that I actually became friends with a female in the community whose name was Sophie. And Sophie actually became my, my best friend um, throughout my childhood after that. I actually don't remember how we became friends. I wish I knew. I should actually ask her. Um, but it was interesting because even though I really enjoyed the company of guys and I really loved to play with trucks and everything, and I, I don't even know if I was a tomboy at that point, um, but Sophie, there was something in Sophie I liked and she was very feminine, but in any case, we just clicked off and we were just the best of friends and we were inseparable from the moment we became friends. And she lived um, pretty much right across the street from where I was. My relationship with Sophie was life-changing because she exposed me to what uh, friendships was like with girls. I, because I didn't have any dolls and I didn't really care for it at the time, I really had to learn um, what it was like to play with dolls and, and what it was like to play with a girl and to, to do jump rope and to go running. And um, it really changed my life. Um, because then I got to learn a little more about myself through the relationship with my best friend, Sophie. Now, how was and how is your relationship with your neighbors? How is your relationship with your neighborhood? Um, coming to this country, I realized there were neighborly uh, relationships didn't exist the way that I grew up with. I can't just go to my neighbor and ask for a cup of sugar if I'm running out of sugar. It's different in different cultures, but that doesn't mean it's, it's bad. It just means that whatever neighborhood you grew up in, it's gonna shape your relationships now and it probably shaped your relationships in the past and may shape your relationships in the future. So let's move on. Next, I have the church family. Now I grew up Catholic and it was unheard of to be talking in church and during mass when the mass was going on. Um, I used to attend with my mom or attend with my aunt and you sat down with your relative in the church and you stayed quiet when the priest spoke. That's just the way I was raised. So it was a culture shock for me when I came to these United States and attended an Adventist church and would see different young people leaving their parents and going to sit in a different pew with their friends during service. That was just mind boggling to me. Again, it's a different dynamic and different churches have different laws and different rules and different traditions on, on different things of that nature. But because of that, I didn't make any friends really during church, um, when I was a Catholic, because there was no time for conversing, there was no time for talking, except maybe after mass. But coming into this new religion and coming into a, a faith where um, you can speak, and there was even aspects during church where you could reach out and, and hug somebody or, or give a, a handshake and ask, how are you doing? And to really converse with someone. Then another aspect of social health happened here. Because in your church family, even if you're not blood related with these relative with these individuals, you actually learn more and you grow with people you see weekly um, and relationships and friendships um, grow and flourish in that environment. So 
as you may guess, unsurprisingly, when I first started to attend the church in New York, I had a hard time making friends because I just, my culture shift just wasn't shifting. I was stuck in the mode of, I'm in church. I'm not going to get up and sit next to my friends or go and, and find out, you know, how somebody else was doing and how their week was going. I just had to, I just had to grow out of that, if you can say, if you, if you could imagine. But for some of you, some of your best friends came out of this environment because you grew up with them or you got used to seeing the same people week after week. And so you actually grow and flourish in that aspect of your life. So next, uh, we have schoolmates and maybe college uh, mates as well. That's the next one. That's another place that you get to exercise those things that you learn. You get to exercise and learn um, how to meet. And you also get exposed to more individuals, maybe from different cultures, from different uh, religions, with different religions, sorry. Um, you might... Uh, experience people who are not religious at all. You may um, learn and your mind may be expanded to how different people grew up. And then there is so much intermingling in school and in college. And that's another place where our social health takes another step up, where we learn to mingle with others who did not grow up like us, who are not members of our family, who who are from different cultures, different countries. Some even speak multi, uh, different languages. Um, you might even have to learn a language if you really want to become a friend of another language. And there's so many dynamics and so many different awesome things that happens um, in school and in colleges. Um, but you get to grow that way and uh, you get to benefit with these relationships in that aspect. And finally, what I did with the fifth one, I actually grouped co-workers and other groups in that one. So another community where we could meet people and grow in our relationships and grow in our social discourse with one another is at work. In the line of work that you have, it may be easy for you to actually talk to an individual and have a relationship with someone in the, in the work field. Um, but according to the kind of job that you have or the career that you are in, you may be the only female. You may be the only person even in the job, or you may work at home, and that way you really cannot build um, relationships that way. And in the others field, I also included uh, interest groups or different hobbies that you might have and different groups that you might be a part of. That's another place where you can learn and you can grow your relationships outside of the home, outside of your neighborhood, outside of your church family. So these are just places, these are just communities I wanted to mention where you could find like-minded people and also people who don't think like you that you could also meld with and you could have awesome relationships and quality relationships with other females and other individuals um, in these different communities. Um, and it's really awesome also when you could actually mingle these relationships with one another. Sometimes they're possible, sometimes it's not. Um, but to have these friends that you have from different aspects of your life come together and meet each other and then grow a sisterhood that way. So I mentioned my friend Sophie that was in my neighborhood. So she was in my neighborhood community at that um, in that aspect of my life. But growing up, when I um, became an adult, I had another best friend who um, she actually fell in the, I guess you would say she fell in the other category. I went on a mission trip to Ecuador and I met my friend Katie there. Now, um, Katie lived in a different state, um, different area completely, and we didn't even click then. It took a couple of months later um, when we both attended uh, a conference in Kentucky at GYC, which is the Generation of Youth for Christ conference, um, that we actually connected and our relationship blossomed and bloomed for the next few many years. So looking at these um, communities, and I know I spoke a, a good bit about each one, 
you may find yourself smiling and thinking about relationships and friendships you have with some of your girlfriends and how you guys met up and how you are still connected and just being happy and thinking about these relationships that really edify your life. Or you may be on the flip side of it. You may be cringing at this topic. You may be looking at these different communities and thinking, man, I've kind of blew it with some of these relationships I used to have or something that was growing and I accidentally killed it. Um, or you might not have any friends that you could think of that are really quality and deep relationships where you could really just let your hair down with this sister or with this friend. So how do you connect with ladies of like interest? How do you how do you have a sisterhood? How do you have sisters? How do you have friends when, when you just don't even know how to start? And so I wanted to just keep it basic and just start from the beginning. Kimberly, you're muted. I am sorry. Yeah, I just saw that. Um, do you need me to go back a bit? Just a few, maybe the last sentence. Okay. All right. So yes. So, so I did mention as you as you look at these different um, categories that I have on the on the screen. I I wanted to say that for some of you, it may be an awesome thing to reminisce about your childhood, and to look at all the relationships and the friendships you had when you were a, a, a teenager. Um, you had when you were a young adult. You have now that you have um, made in your family, in your neighborhood, if, if, if you have a church family, uh, school friends, and all these different groups, but it also may be a source of contention. You might be realizing, I don't even have deep friends. I don't have any sisters on my side. I have, I don't have these friends. I don't know I, I, my social health, what that status looks like. I don't have anyone. And if I have some, I don't know how to maintain um, these social interactions with my friends. How do I do that? So I want to admit that I felt I was late in the game myself. Um, because I had so many male friends, I didn't really know how to interact with females because I had so many male friends growing up as a, as a child. And Sophie came and changed the dynamic a little bit. And then when I went to what we call secondary school um, in the Caribbean, um, I was in a class that had a lot of females, so I, they, we had to sit next to each other, and that was an easy way for me to make more female friends that way. And so, even if I feel I was late in the game to learn how to have female friends, I just want to share with you things I think and things I know that has worked for me, and that I believe it could work for you if you are looking to have more solid, quality relationships with other women. Um, and looking to strengthen the relationships you already have and to create relationships with new individuals. So I do want to mention something else um, before I go on. Now, if you have had female relationships, you know at times you may have one or more friends that, um, that they were your ride or die friends, but something happened and there was a schism in the relationship. One day, you know, your friend decides um, that they don't want to speak to you anymore and you don't know why. Or one of your friends has the first boyfriend in the group and then there is a break in the sisterhood because some may be jealous that one might have a boyfriend and this other one might not. Or you may be the jealous friend. You may have turned sour because someone has gotten married before you or, or opened a business before you or are just having some gift or you see them as being blessed with something that you don't have and, and it's hurting it's it's hurting you and the best way to protect yourself you feel is to just cut this person off and there are different reasons why relationships um, don't work out our friendships don't last they're different really they're different reasons um, but even when these things happen, I think it's also important to know that and to think really deeply about what is happening in your heart 
to know yourself, to see what's happening, and see if you can have a really open relationship, open communication, sorry, with that friend to find out why did this relationship fizzle? Is it something you need to fight for? How can you mend it? Can it be mended? And if it's something outside of your uh, self, outside of you and your sister's relationship, you might need to involve someone else. So of course, these are difficult questions to answer and um, there are many layers to any relationship. But for many of them, a combination, as I mentioned, of open relationship, prayer, uh, counseling, and intervention may be just what you need. Every case is different, but um, as we move forward, I want us to just know that relationships are tough. But even as we struggle in the midst of this pandemic and we struggle with our relationships, I want to go back to the basics with, with you all. I want to look at how do we become social? What does that even look like? And how do we thrive in our social health? So um, the first thing I have is actually to know thyself. I say this quite often to myself. And seriously, for me, it was the first thing that I needed to know. And I think it's the first thing we all need to know. You need to take time to know who you are and what makes you tick. The Lord has made us fearfully and wonderfully. Each and every one of us are different. And he formed and fashioned us. And he knows us the best. And so it's imperative you take time to know who you are before you could find out and know who, who do I want as a friend? Who can I see on my side? Who would compliment me? Who would be real with me? Um, and who is willing to give me criticism, at, uh, you know, constructive criticism that I may grow and learn and flourish in our relationship. Now, I will say that learning 